the three quests, the quest for sense desire, the quest for becoming, the quest for the holy life. Now, the, the quest for sense desires means that you're being pulled back into a coarser kind of existence by that, that strong desire. The quest for becoming, it, it helps pull you back. You want to be reborn as a deva instead of work uh, harder to get off the wheel of sansara. You want to be reborn. You want to become again. And the quest for the holy life, now, what this says is brahmacharya, yeah, brahmacharya yasena. Uh, brahmacharya means literally it as a person beyond sexual activity. When you take a brahmacharya vow, that means that you won't you won't uh, have any more sexual activity, at least for as long as you keep that or want that vow. Now, a lot of people, especially in this country, that, that sounds like something that's real undesirable. Why would anybody not want to have sexual activity? Don't you want to raise children? I get that question a lot. When you take the vow of, of brahmacharya, the vow of not having any more sexual activity at all. You get to see how mind works much more clearly. You get to see how it grabs on to sensual pleasures much more clearly. And how that desire can take up so much time and space in your thinking and in the way you act. When you take on this, this vow, you let go of that low, coarse kind of uh, just bouncing around from one thing to another. And you start directing your mind to be able to see things in a more clear way. And the energy that you would normally expel by having sexual acti activity, now it goes into creating a mind that is much more alert. A mind that, that sees. It's like when you take the vow of, of brahmacharya, it's like taking off a lot of padding. And when you bump into something, if you have a big heavy coat on, you don't even notice that you bumped into it. But you take that coat off and it's just bare skin and you bump into it, you see the pain of that. You become much more aware. What level are you talking about? About You're talking about low or high. You're talking about people that are very much interested in keeping that same kind of thing going without exploring into deeper realms of mind. People that become monks live between 20 and 30 years longer than people who are laymen. And one of the reasons is because we take a brahmacharya vow. There was a man that, whose watch is that? There, uh, there was a, a man that he was uh, trying to sell some, some kind of product or something. He made a tape that was, the name of this tape was uh, Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Okay. And that statement right there really says a lot. These people that do all of these studies, they die when they're 50 and 60 years old. 
and the people that that follow more closely a healthy life live much longer. But the experts, <laughs> they're already gone. Linus Pauling is still alive. He's the man that got the, the uh, Nobel Prize for vitamin C. The man is 97 years old and he's still teaching at uh, University of California at Santa Cruz. He's 97 years old. All of the people that criticized him for taking vitamin C and saying vitamin C doesn't work, they said he was completely out in left field. It's just nonsense. They're all dead. And here he is, 97, and he's, he's writing books. He's giving talks. He travels around the country. Now, there's more than just that one thing of his taking vitamin C that made him like that. I had, a, uh, when I was in Malaysia, I was at a meditation center. And a Burmese monk came around. Now, this meditation center was three floors up. And it was long, big, high ceilings, like 20-foot ceilings. So you had to walk up quite a few steps to get up to the top floor. And the top floor was where we practiced our meditation. Now this monk, two or three times a day, would walk all the way up to the top and all the way back down to the bottom. He was 96, 97 years old. He was traveling around the world. He didn't need glasses. His eyes were perfect. His hearing was perfect. He came up and he gave a Dhamma talk one day on the importance of keeping your precepts. And he said, you can't underestimate the importance of keeping your precepts. See? He's still healthy, he's still alive. He, d he died a uh, year before last. He was 107. So, we have to be careful with thinking about, I mean, the experts aren't always the people that are right when it comes to these kind of statements. And I'm not saying that don't have sexual activity or have sexual activity either way. I'm not saying, I'm saying I'm doing it because I see that it has definite advantages and being a monk, it makes life a lot easier. So, it's your choice whether you want to continue having, having that kind of activity or not. When I was a layman, I always found that having that kind of activity led to a lot of pain and suffering. Headaches just major headaches it's so much easier when as a, as, as a monk I'll tell you 